welcome to Still Speak Podcast. This is another update on the family dynasty murder mystery involving the Murdoch family out of Hampton County, South Carolina. There's not been a whole lot of updates since the last time I did a video about the case. The last time was about two weeks ago when Alex Murdaugh had turned himself in to face charges connected to an insurance scheme plot that he planned. And those charges were for insurance fraud, conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, and filing a false police report. And, you know, Alex had planned and... Uh, set up his own death that backfired and I no pun intended there but and he had survived and the person he enlisted to help him in this scheme has also faced many charges well since then I saw that the law firm that Alex's grandfather started almost a century ago that he resigned from a day after he was shot and suffered a superficial gunshot wound to the head uh, the law firm has denounced Alex once again. They had done it once, and now they're doing it again on their website. And I'm going to be reading that to you. It says, The lawyers and employees of PMPED live and work in Hampton, Jasper, Collinson, and Beaufort counties. Most of us grew up in the area, attended local schools, worshipped at area churches, and continue involvement with local civil organizations and charities. We are proud of our community and are distressed by the tragic situation involving our former partner, Alex Murdaugh. The negative attention that this has brought to the community and to our firm is regrettable. PMPED is a robust firm with skilled, experienced attorneys who represent our clients with a fierce commitment to obtaining justice. We are shocked and dismayed to learn that Alex violated our principles and code of ethics. He lied and he stole from us. No member of PMPED was aware of Alex's scheme. When he, we learned that he betrayed our trust, we requested his resignation immediately. We have yet to speak to anyone who is aware of Alex's addiction to opiates. While Alex's situation is tragic, be assured the firm is strong and focused on representing its many clients. We provide legal services locally and statewide. We hold ourselves to the highest ethical standards in handling our clients' cases. Despite the widespread recent publicity, we continue to work to represent our clients with the same diligence and professionalism as prior to the discovery of Alex's misdeeds. The funds taken by Alex will not affect current or future PMPED operations. No client of ours will suffer a financial loss as a result of Alex's misconduct. We have read the media reports about the lawsuit and settlement resulting from the death of Gloria Satterfield. If these reports are accurate, we are stunned at what occurred. It's important for everybody to know that PMPED did not represent Alex in that case. His insurance company hired counsel to represent him. Like many of you, we have lots of questions about Alex and what has recently come to light. We don't know the answers, but we will continue assisting law enforcement and other authorities in an effort to find the truth. So, yeah, I don't think uh, they uh, are too happy with Alex. In their statement, they address the current news that about Gloria Satterfield and just as a reminder, Gloria was the Murdaugh's housekeeper, and she had allegedly died from a slip and fall accident in the Murdaugh home in 2018. And the last I spoke with you, I was telling you that there was an update that SLED, which is South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, had opened an investigation into her death. They also opened an investigation into the death of a 19 year old man who was killed in 2015. And both of these are opened due to things that have happened in the investigation into Paul and Maggie Murdaugh's murders. And we did talk about Stephen, I, I think I said in, in episode two, and I really didn't have much to share with you about Gloria at that time. And so then I talked about Gloria in the last update because it had came out that 
they were opening an investigation into her case, and so they gave us a little bit of information about her actual death. And you can hear those videos on my channel. And, you know, Gloria had died in 2018, which was just prior to when Paul Murda was involved in the boating accident that resulted in the death of 19-year-old Mallory Beach. And the Hampton County Medical Examiner had asked SLED to open an investigation, and it was revealed that it was actually Alex who had told the story that Gloria had slipped and fell down the stairs over his dogs um, because Gloria was airlifted to the hospital and she was uh, not conscious for three weeks until she passed away. And so she never actually gave her version of what happened. So they were going off of what Alex had said. And it's interesting to me that the story Alex gave was that she fell over the dogs. And the reason for that is because, uh, for those who have been following the case, Paul and Maggie's bodies were found, you know, outside by the family's dog kennels on the property. And we know that because in the 911 call, Alex Murda says, you know, they're out by my kennels. So it's... Uh, a little creepy to me that you know he tells the story of you know the housekeeper dying uh, because of the dogs because she tripped over them and his wife and son later you know a couple of years are found outside by dog kennels it may be something it may be nothing I just found that it really interesting and you know Alex Murda is a defendant on many lawsuits in addition to the charges that he's facing for the insurance fraud scheme. And most of the suits, you know, stem from 2019 when the boating accident occurred and involved Mallory Beach's family. Renee Beach, which is her mother, has a lawsuit against Parker's 55, Alex Murda, and Buster Murda. And then in early September 2021, there was another legal action filed by the family in Hampton County against the same defendants so there's multiple ones there and then a passenger in the 2019 boating crash also filed a personal injury lawsuit on september 21st of this year so just last week with the same defendants as the mallory beach family's lawsuits and of course include alex murdoch so he's also named in this lawsuit and in that lawsuit basically connor cook you know, according to court documents, had said that he, Murdaugh and others were orchestrating a campaign to blame him for the crash instead of Paul. And Paul was the one that was actually indicted and he ended up, you know, being killed later. And Connor Cook suffered multiple jaw fractions in the crash. And then another lawsuit involves a insurance company that was had insurance on the boat and it's versus Alex Murda and Buster Murda and Renee Beach and in September of 2019 the insurance company had sued the Murda family in, in family court asking to relieve the company of financial responsibilities for any claims by the Murda and his son, Buster. And this suit stemmed from the Beach's wrongful death suit against the family. And, you know, she's also named as a defendant on this particular lawsuit. And the Murdoch family requested that two commercial insurance policies cover them in the wrongful death suit. But the insurance company argued that it had no duty to cover the family in that case. And the suit argued the family was not insured as individuals and that the policies were for injuries from private hunting operations and that the insurance documents state the policies in place do not apply to bodily injury arising out of the ownership or use of watercraft, according to this particular lawsuit. And the lawsuit was actually dismissed this month when a judge ruled in favor of the insurance company. So now you have one, two, three, four. So that's four lawsuits right there that don't include the charges he's facing for the insurance fraud schemes. 
And then you have another lawsuit where he's the defendant, and that is involving missing money in relation to Gloria Satterfield's death as a housekeeper. And, you know, this was recently filed. Actually, they had filed a case, and then they did something recently, so let me tell you about it. So in Hampton County, they allege that Alex and two others were part of an arrangement that resulted in more than a half a million dollars in insurance proceeds being wrongfully withheld from the Satterfield sons after she had died following the incident in the Murdaugh's Hampton home in February of 2018. And Brian Harriet and Tony Satterfield, who filed the lawsuit, said they haven't seen one dime of the money the insurance company paid out in their mother's death. So there was this... Um, legal action that was taking place and there was settlements that were made i talked about this in my last video but yet the family of gloria did not know that they had been settled because they weren't told or they didn't know or weren't aware for whatever reason until investigative reporters ascended onto Hampton County when Paul and Maggie were murdered and everybody was looking into the story and they found out that they had been settled and they were settled for a significant amount of money and they never got a single dime of it and in light of all that has come out since Paul and Maggie's murders involving Alex Murdaugh and him misappropriating funds from his law firm and having an opiate addiction and setting up the scheme to ki get himself killed so that his son Buster Murdoch can cash out on a $10 million insurance policy, this family is clearly very upset that, you know, in the midst of all this, they never got their money from settlements that they trusted Alex to take care of and let them know and pay them. He never did it. So they filed a suit about it, and they're actually also calling for Alex to be arrested until the money, you know, that they say allegedly was embezzled is returned. So, you know, we already have the misappropriating of funds from Alex Murda and with his law firm, and we do have where he was trying to do the insurance scheme to get $10 million to his son. So you have to wonder here if, you know, this settlement, he did embezzle it, right? It's, it's sure looking that way. And it would be believable considering all the other things that he has been involved in, right? And according to the court documents, uh, Satterfield's attorneys um, say that the estate with the Murdaugh had been settled for $505,000. And that, of course, like I said, that they never knew of the settlement until recently and never received the money. And they said their clients didn't know. And that there was an additional $3.8 million claim that reached a settlement in 2019. So we're talking a lot of money here. And the court documents also said that Gloria Satterfield's heirs should have received about $2.8 million after other fees were deducted, but they were not paid a dime. Richard and Bland, which is the Satterfield's attorney, as attorneys, excuse me, claimed that Murdaugh set up a bank account under the name Forge for it to appear the money was going to the settlement firm. Ford Consulting, LLC. Upon information and belief, Murdoch instructed Fleming to issue checks for the $2.7 million that was otherwise paid to Tony and Brian, the sons of Gloria Satterfield, as beneficiaries of her estate. The court documents allege that there was deception and Murdoch was actually embezzling or fraudulently misapplying the funds that were intended to be paid to Tony and Brian. Which is uh, curious because 
I wonder if they have evidence of this similar to the evidence that the law firm had uncovered with Brian, uh, Alex misappropriating funds. And so they're basically saying here that there was deception and that Murda was embezzling and or fraudulently misapplying the funds that were actually funds for these two sons. So yeah, Alex has himself tied up in a lot going on. He's got a lot. He's, he's messed up in all these different uh, lawsuits and issues, and there's so many different branches of the story. It's truly unbelievable. Sometimes when you're reading it, it's just like, does the story ever end at some point? Or it's just like, keep uncovering, uncovering these things. And, you know, so you also have this, the police and, uh, I mean, SLED, you know, they've opened several investigations that involve the Murdaws. You have the investigation into Paul's murder and Maggie's murder, which was at the same time. You have them op- investigating Alex's shooting on the side of the road that everybody thought he had been shot, you know, by somebody else. And it turns out that he set up his own shooting on the side of a road. They have Gloria Satterfield's death that they opened an investigation into. And then we have also Stephen Smith. So you have, you know, quite a big, oh, and the insurance scheme investigation with SLED. So you have one, two, three, four, five, you know, six different investigations that SLED has had to open in just the last four months involving this family, this very prominent and well-known family dynasty in Hampton County. And I forgot to note in my last video about Murdaugh that Alec, when Alex had turned himself in, we got to see him. And we also got to see a mugshot. And he didn't have any visible signs of injury in his mugshot or during his actual court appearance for his bonding uh, hearing. And he had no bandages on either. And that's fascinating because it was less than two weeks after the shooting and he did not have any wounds or bandages on even though it was supposed to be a superficial gunshot wound I would have expected to at least see something right some type of um, injury of sorts and interesting enough here Curtis Edward Edward Smith who was hired and to help do the scheme allegedly this is what the you know the sled in prosecutor is alleging he is actually insisting that he's innocent <laughs> so he said quote i know that they're trying to say about me and it ain't true unquote and he told us to the new york post and he went on to say that quote it was the craziest situation i've ever been involved with i was set up to be the fall guy and those damn pictures of me in the newspaper i was looking at them this morning they didn't even let me take a damn shower unquote and we learn in this report that he is actually a distant cousin of Alex Murda and also a former client, which we already knew. And he's the latest person to be brought into this murder mystery. He claims Alex set him up to make it look as if Curtis had shot him. Quote, I get a call from Alex that Saturday afternoon to come where he was, and I thought it was maybe to fix something. I had no idea what he wanted. I just went over there. Unquote. And then he went on and he said that he drove over there and that Alex got out of the car with a gun. He was waving it around as if he might about to be shooting himself. Curtis says that he ran over and he wrestled with Alex to try to get the gun away from him. And the gun kind of just went off above his head. He said that he got scared and so he ran to his truck and he took off. And he said that he took the gun and he threw it away, but he didn't say where he threw it away. And he said, quote, I wound up with the gun. It was plain stupid. Just plain stupid, unquote. And he was asked if any bullet actually struck or grazed Alex's head. And Smith shook his head and said, I don't know. I just got out of there. Smith doesn't have any legal representation just yet. And he's actually wanting to find a lawyer with a bone to pick against the Murdaws which I think at this point there's a lot of people who have a bone to pick with Alex Murda. And so he was also asked if he uh, killed Maggie and Paul Murda, you know, for for 
Alex Murda. And he shook his head and he said no. So that's what he said. And he said, quote, if a car is broken down, if things need working on, neighbors in this area at times need something done. I've never hurt anybody. It's that simple. It's a bad deal, a real bad deal. I guess I was naive for getting caught up in this damn thing, too, unquote. And it has been claimed that Curtis was Alex's drug dealer on top of being a former client and now finding out he's also a distant cousin. Quote, I never had a reason not to like him before. I understand he's in fight or flight mode and he wanted to be the heavyweight in the water so he can fly. Unquote. And then he said that Murdoch should not mess with him any further further, and advised him to um, strongly against doing such. And uh, he said, I wouldn't advise him to try to set me up. So that's... Uh, <laughs> This is, I, I, I'm only laughing because this guy is a really interesting character and this story is just so freaking wild. I mean, let's face it, it's just wild. And so you have this guy who's, you know, the latest person to be brought into this disaster and he's just kind of like, hey, he set me up and, you know, he better not mess with me. You know, I'm sure he said it more bluntly than that. They're just not going to print that. <laughs> And most residents speak to reporters about the Murdaws anonymously. Still, at this point, even with all that's happened, people are afraid of this family, the Murdaugh family. And it's really weird at this point because I think the Murdaugh family name has been completely destroyed. But they are. They're still fearful. And it just kind of um, shows you how much fear there was prior to all this of this family. And a local Hampton resident said that she's known the Murdaughs for more than 30 years and that she didn't understand why SLED announced right after the murders of Paul and Maggie why they said that there was no danger to the public. And then Alex's brothers went on Good Morning America just two weeks after the murders you know, asking for help and to find the killer and offering a reward when the cops had originally said that there was no danger to the public and they never mentioned a hunt for the suspect. And so she was really puzzled about that um, because why did they say that there was no danger to the public if there was a suspect out there, you know, somewhere? And she also pointed out that her and many others do believe that Murdaugh had some form, if not full, involvement in the killing of his wife and son, Paul and Maggie. So, you know, I can't disagree with her here. And, you know, I think it's actually really possible that Alex was involved in it. it there's a very good chance and, you know, I look at this story as a whole, and I think to myself, this man was pre presented with the perfect cover, the perfect opportunity to get out of whatever situation he was in at that time and make it seem like it was this revenge, like somebody was seeking revenge because of Mallory Beach's death or seeking revenge because of Stephen Smith's death um, and whatnot. So... I said in one of my videos is what if the, these deaths that have been involved with the Murdoch family was the perfect cover for something far more sinister. And what I was implying here was that Alex used these deaths connected to his family name as basically a cover to make it look like somebody just wanted to get back at them. And... I don't know how long he was misappropriating funds with the law firm. At least I don't see anywhere where they actually have disclosed yet how long. I think that's still being investigated. And they did disclose he had this opiate addiction for 20 long years. So clearly Alex was in situations before the death of his wife and son. So you have to wonder here, is he involved? And was this there a motive behind it? 
And there's so many different investigations, you know, that are being worked on at this time to figure it out. And this saga continues, right? And meanwhile, Buster Marta hasn't spoken out at all to the media, not even about the murder of his brother and mother. The fall from grace continues. What do you think? Did a vengeful person kill Paul and Maggie Murda, which added or exasperated Alex's opiate addiction and possible misappropriating of funds into the millions? Did Alex know he wouldn't be at that ranch the night his wife and son were killed and had set up a hit on them? Like he hired somebody to shoot him? Did he do it himself and just didn't have the guts to follow through with killing himself? Why did Alex want to be killed so that his son got money from an insurance policy? What was that about? Is there more to that? Why not just kill yourself? I know he thought that there was a suicide clause, but even still, what's with this money? Why would Buster Murdoch need $10 million? Or was he just wanting to do this because he didn't want people to know that he had been misappropriating funds and had an opiate addiction? And he thought, well, it won't matter. I'll be dead when they find out. I don't know. Who knows? Did he want to die because the reality is is he did kill his son and, and wife? And lastly, the FBI has been called in. Because SLED has had to open so many investigations, the ones that we just went over, involving the Murdoch family, that they needed to bring in the FBI. And hopefully we'll be getting answers to all of these questions sooner rather than later. The story is actually developing rather quickly, and we're going to see what happens from here. So until next time, I'll see you soon.